Hi, I'm Libby, this is Nikki, and we're from Cosmos Games, and today we're going to talk to you about a very exciting new game, My Island. So, My Island uh, is from Mani Knizia, who produced My City and My City Roll and Build, both of which have done really well for us, um, and which we absolutely love here in mm -hmm. the office. We've played them all the way through. We haven't yet finished My Island, but it's looking to be cracking what we have played so, so far. It is... Um, Okay, it's a legacy game, same as same as My City was. So you have eight envelopes, each containing three episodes, so you've got like 24 episodes in total. And you'll work through building up your island um, until you have gone from kind of the very basic first arrival to whatever happens at the end, which we don't know and we wouldn't tell you even if we did. <laughs> um, and what is great about both My City and My Island, they do also have an eternal game. So once you have finished those 24 games of the legacy and you've built out your island in the way that you want to, found out who's the winner, you can still carry on playing the game using the other side of the board and still enjoy all that fun puzzliness of my island again and again and again and if you're playing two players you can actually there's a reset set in here for the stickers and bits and pieces that you can play with the other two colors because it plays from two to four players so if you do play it two you can play the legacy all again Good fun. So that's fun. Yeah, so should we get into how exactly you play? Let's do that. Um, we aren't going to cover what happens later on. We don't want to make any spoilers whatsoever. So we're just going to talk about the first game, um, first chapter, in terms of how you play that. And it, it sort of guides you through very easily in terms of what happens next and how to progress your play, what scoring things change. But the basics are always going to be the same. Um, it's just what you're scoring and each of the envelopes that you have, so there's several of these, this is the first one, the arrival, um, they'll have different scoring conditions in them and within that a nice handy reminder um, of in game one you get this, in game two you need to score this um, in the little bits of paper that they give you here. So really easy to just review and recap what your scoring is just on that. So. You start off with a little cube and it begins on the 10 point mark, which is, I like it when a game gives you more than more than the standard to one start point off to with, start absolutely. with. And each of the boards has got a colour and you are encouraged to write on the board when it comes to this kind of legacy game. You're going to be write the name of your island on the board at the top and then you're going to be marking through these little kind of point markers at the top as you go along mm -hmm. uh, at the end of each episode. What I find best um, with this, we've got lots of different pieces. Everyone's pieces are exactly the same, um, but they have the different colour players um, reverse side on them. And what I like to do is place them out in their different sizes in areas. So all of the four pieces together, all of the long straight threes together, so that when I'm looking for that specific piece, it's a little bit easier to find rather than sort of a, a sea of pieces. You'll know that you can hone down to the area Area that has the exact shape that you are looking for. Because like my city, it's supposed to be quite a speedy game. You shouldn't be sat there having analysis paralysis for like 15 minutes. It's like, you turn <laughs> the card, you play your piece. Yeah. It's not you don't just sit around and look for it, uh, which is part of the fun and part of the frustration, I think, of this particular game. But yes, yes. It adds to, adds to the magic, really. And that, that decision space of which um, which sort of pointing criteria you're going to go for most and can you achieve several at once or do you have to sacrifice one lot of points gain for another. Um, that's where the decisions come in here for sure. Um, and it's interesting when you lay them out like this as well, I think it's quite helpful to make some of those decisions because you can see, all oh, right, if I need a sort of maybe a two space area left that I want to be able to fill in, you can see whether you're going to place it, whether those pieces are actually left to draw. Um, and so how we know whether what we're going to draw <coughs> is there's a deck of cards and they all have the different pieces pictured on them so you know as you're going through that's the piece that you're going to play. It's quite sensible when you're playing it because the, I mean, because a lot of them do look very similar that actually when you're looking at it just do have a quick just double check you're actually putting down the right piece mm -hmm. so that halfway through the game you don't realise you've actually put down the wrong, the wrong piece one. at some point which, <laughs> which would never happen never. in such experienced game players ourselves. Never. never. <laughs> so with this one you are allowed to place your pieces on the beach 
and also on the heath. You cannot place it on these palm tree areas or in the forest area. When you start to work out what you're going to place, um, the first piece must start on the beach. So this is this piece here. So you can choose in this round, you can choose wherever on the beach. There are different rounds which may have different starting places and things like that. But to start with, it lets you place anywhere on the beach. Yeah, so and one of the pieces on, doesn't it? Yeah. To, not both. You basically, in this round, uh, you are trying to fill up the beach spaces. If you don't, you will get minus points at the end. And also, if you manage to put houses on the beach, because who doesn't like a sea view on their balcony, then you'll get extra points with those, which you score as you place that tile. Obviously, there's no houses on this tile, so we don't have any points to gain at this point. Um, and then the next thing to note is when you pull another card, you now have to match up one of these colours with a colour that you've already placed. And luckily, we're able to do that with this tile. Um, if you weren't able to place a tile, you would have to turn it upside down and minus one point from your score for not placing. And you can choose to do that as many times as you like. And then when you choose to stop is also your choice and you won't lose a point if you choose to stop before placing the tile. Um, and that's sort of uh, where some of the decision space comes in as to whether you can maximize a score a bit more or not. And all these different shapes obviously fit in differently but you must make sure that at least one of the sides matches one of the, the colours that it's going next to. Just one side on the whole tile um, and you are fine to place that. Got blue, blue, red. So now we get to finally place a beach space so hopefully we're able to put that on the beach somewhere. But don't forget the, it has to am. touch. So this is the first one that I'm able to score. So at this point, because I've got my house on the beach, I can score one point and I just move my little cube along for that. And rather annoyingly for me, if I want to place, I can't place one here because the blue and the yellow don't match and the red doesn't match. So I could place it on here, but that then is going to, because the blue matches the blue, but that then is going to leave me with a single beach place. Which and there are no single cubes. Yeah. So you will be basically definitely losing one point for that. Yeah, so I get one point which I'm going to score now because mm -hmm. I've got one house on the beach. But that was an annoying card. It's frustrating. Me. Yeah. So mm. You carry on doing this, placing your tiles out into your island, covering all the beach as much as you possibly can. Um, when you get to the point where you feel like you need to stop, you're not going to be placing anymore. Um, maybe you don't have the correct shapes to place in there or it's just too risky to know whether that card is actually going to draw that you're desperately waiting for. You choose to stop and then you will take off in this round, you'll take off any minus points for any beach that is left uncovered and that will be your score for this round. And the rest of the games run very similarly yeah. to that um, but you'll just be adding small little rules in there's some fun bits and pieces inside these envelopes secret stuff um, that just adds a little rule as you go um, and as we mentioned earlier there's always a little chart reminding you of what your score conditions are so it never gets too tricky and um, the basics are very simple to pick up so I think um, it's 10 and up in the age category um, and only a playtime of 30 minutes so mm. you can play one envelope at a time just one whole game at a time totally up to you and what's great with this the same as my city is that if you if you are kind of leading quite often it will give you something that will make you just not be as far ahead or give mm -hmm. somebody else a bonus for the next round so whether it be a stick or it be something else that they can do so that it just keeps the game slightly more equal yeah which is really nice it stops getting that kind of element where someone's running away in the lead you just don't want to play anymore we, it kind yeah. of negates that oh yeah definitely a really good balancing act and between chapters it will level everything off for sure yeah well we hope that you enjoy my island and um this has helped you see whether it's the game for you we'll see you next time bye, bye.